first I thought, well, let's have a woman's gathering here, you know, at the sacred site. We need to come back here. And that's the instructions that I got from the years of fasting there, because each year I'd come back and there'd be more desecration to the area. And I thought, well, how could I protect and preserve this area? You know, should I go to court? Should we take over it? Should we set up a blockade or what should we do? And it was really simple. And what the ancestors and what they told me during my fast was just bring the people back. Just come back here. And so the woman's gathering, you know, at first we thought, okay, we're going to bring, you know, the indigenous woman back. But then as time went by and it didn't take very long and you know we were brainstorming and meeting with other women and other women would you know came to our, our our meetings other women from other nations and you know hearing their stories and what happened with them and what continues to happen to women we thought no let's have it women of all nations because it's not just the indigenous women I mean, right now, you know, it's it's such an epidemic here, what's happening with the murdered and missing women, because we are the last people to be colonized in the world, and we are still fresh in that colonization. We still have bits and pieces. I mean, I shouldn't say bits and pieces. We still have a lot of information of the ancient ways, but from the history... And, you know, they won't teach you this in schools. And I don't know if I'll teach you in university, but if you do your research and you find out that the murdered and missing woman started in Europe 2,000 years ago, the women were being murdered over there. They were being called witches yeah. because they were praying to the moon and to the earth and having their women dances and their women gatherings. And then that colonization spread across the earth so this colonization of women all over the world has happened and then here right now and at this time we are fulfilling a prophecy where all nations would come to the red nation and go back to the ancient ways and we all have our ancient ways all nations of people have their ancient ways. It's just that right now, we are still new in our colonization. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, and I think it goes with, if we use the four aspects of man, the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual, I think this is really the time, and it's hard to say whether it's not always the time, but I think it really is the time right now, and has been for a while, to come from a spiritual aspect. And it makes perfect sense to me that, part of that would be woman coming into her own as well because they kind of go hand in hand. You know, I thought about, you know what I call this hydro dam here? I call it patriarchy because the lake here, her energy is being used to make electricity. And we can use the sun and the moon for energy. We don't need to use the water. So if we lived in a balanced if our societies were balanced with a balance of male and female, we wouldn't have hydro dams. We wouldn't have a nuclear reactor in Panama. So indigenous people, we have always lived in matriarchal societies. And matriarchal means it's a balance of male and female. It has nothing to do with feminism. It has nothing to do with you know, woman being bossy or... Um, balance. Yes, it's balance. It's it's women that are balanced with the ecological system. It's honoring that, and it's living in, in societies that are connected with natural law or universal law. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, this has been so amazing. And, and this is just like a a tiny drop of what people could be in store for during this uh, gathering, the Mother Earth Gathering, Women of All Nations, from June 12th to 15th. Now, it's my understanding as well, Diane, that 
There's a dinner and workshop on Saturday, May 31st. Is that still? Yes. We're having a, a dinner and a, and a workshop at, uh, at Moongate Bed and Breakfast. Um, and it's in the town of Whitemouth, which is uh, about 10 minutes from, from my home here in Southern Sisters. Yes, we'll be having uh, a, a workshop, and I will be conducting the workshop, I guess, and talking about um, just what I'm talking about with you and probably maybe more in detail because I think it's, you know, we may go on for like three, four hours because, you know, there's a dinner as well. So When does that start? At 5 p.m. I think from 5 to, um, I think 5 to 7. So that's two hours. Yep. <laughs> so 5 to 7 at the Moongate Bed and Breakfast. And it's posted on Facebook as well. You can probably find it on the Mother Earth Gathering page, event page. Um, I'll post it on there. Right, on Facebook. Yes. Yeah, I think that's where I saw it was, was from there. So now if, if people wanted to uh, get in touch with you... Uh, They'll you know. get in touch with Jenny from Moongate Bed and Breakfast because she's the one who organized it and put it together and asked me if I would uh, do a workshop and we can have a dinner. And we'll be doing more things throughout the summer, and um, and Jenny's working with us as well with is, is that, gathering. Is that Jenny? Uh, Jenny Dupay. Oh, my God, that's the Dowser lady. Yeah. Oh, we love Jenny. Jenny's awesome. Yeah, I know she is. God, we haven't seen her in a long time. Yeah. She's wicked. Yeah, she told me the story about you. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Which oh, one? something about she did a radio show with you years ago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Jenny. You know, it's really interesting because when I met Jenny and my son, you know, we saw her at Superstore in Winnipeg, and and my son said, oh, there's one of the teachers at school. And I thought, oh, okay. And I just, you know, kind of gave her the brush off. And I said, oh, hi, and how are you? And then kind of walked away. But, you know, I homeschool my son now because I prefer to teach my children things that are not taught in school. Yeah, like truth. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And about the ancestors. Yeah. Yes, because my son, you know, he would always, it, my son is so awesome. He, um, they had the Terry Fox Day and, you know, he, he came home and he said, Mom, we're fundraising for the uh, Terry Fox Day. So, you know, either I uh, skip rope or, or, um, or I run or I walk. And I said, but you know, we have a cure for cancer. He goes, yeah, I know that. I said, well, we don't need to fundraise. Go ahead. You can, you can skip. You, you know, you can run, you can walk for the exercise, but, you know, just, just tell them that we have a cure for cancer. He went to school the next day and he told his teacher, he said, you know what, we have a cure for cancer. This is just a money-making thing. I <laughs> can't <laughs> for him, holy. <laughs> He'd go to school and, and then he, I think this last year he was talking about matriarchy. And he told his teacher, he goes, lions are matriarchal, and so are elephants and ants and bees. <laughs> oh, and his man. teacher said, no, they're not. Oh, my God. No, really? Oh. And I phoned the school. And he also said that um, something about the history of indigenous people that, well, that we came from Europe 11,000 years ago. So I phoned the school, and this was in September last year. And I said, why are you feeding this stuff to my son? It's not the truth. Why? Because... I teach my son these things, which is the truth, and I tell him about, you know, about the ancient knowledge, the ancient history. I talk to the principal and the teacher, and he said, well, we have a curriculum that we have to follow. And I said, yeah, but it's not the truth. And he said, I know it's theories. And I said, no, no, no theories. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take my son out of school. I'm going to homeschool him. So I took him out, and he's happy now. He doesn't have to live up to you know, with everyone, because he felt like he, he didn't fit in. Because yeah. last year, he had really long hair, like down to his waist, and he would wear a braid to school. And <laughs> and his name is Megasi, which means bald eagle. You know, there was kids making fun of his name. And he said, well, my name is bald eagle, M Mikasi. So I just thought, okay, you know, I'm, I don't want him to be like everyone else. You know, he, I'm going to bring him home. So we homeschool now. And so he learns about everything, and he learns so much. 
So beautiful. Anyways, we're going off topic. Yeah, here. but it's it's beautiful. And don't <laughs> anything the only thing that we didn't really get into, and and I was so surprised to to hear this was uh, about the crop circle. Right. In the White Shore area, I, first I heard of it was through you. Yes, last year before the women's gathering, not too far away from my farmhouse that I once lived in last year, we woke up one morning and um, we saw the circle. I was out there having my cup of coffee and I was trying to ignore it because um, I was afraid. But um, my partner, he went right out there and he came back to me and his face was all white and he said, you know, you have uh, a circle out there and I said yeah I kind of saw a bit of it and I was trying to ignore it (laughs) (laughs) and so we were afraid but what we did was we we went to the circle and we took a look at it and walked around it and we saw that it was a complete perfect circle and it looked like something heavy was pushed into the ground and the grass was burned not well not it wasn't burned but just something hot and heavy on the grass you know i phoned some people we we arranged to have a ceremony in ontario and we asked about the ancestors and the circle and so this this uh crop circle what it was was we were told in ceremony that the star nations had put down a drum onto the earth as a reminder that there was once a petroform in the park that was a circular drum petroform, but it was desecrated, and that um, the women are instructed to learn more women songs, mm-hmm. strengthen them. So that was the reason why they had placed this um, this drum onto onto Mother Earth to wow. remind us that we that there was once a, a drum petroform in the park. It's now desecrated, and that the women need to learn the women's songs. And the singing has to do with vibration and energy as well, because the words, it's not chanting, it's a prayer, and the sound, and the beating of the drum, the it's heart. All, yeah. So, and all that, it's such a powerful energy when you sing on the drum, because the words are also prayers and their specific prayers that go out into the universe and the heartbeat and if everyone's heartbeat can come together as one that would strengthen the woman so that was the reason that they had told us through ceremony why we had this crop circle here before the gathering very cool star nations awesome i'd love to talk to you longer but uh we gotta we gotta leave the studio here for uh, ray alexander and fascinating rhythm at the top of the hour but i just want to thank you this morning diane for taking the time to share some of your sacred space with our sacred space oh you're welcome i loved it Awesome. And again, the gathering is Mother Earth Gathering, Women of All Nations, June 12th to the 15th. Check it out. And uh, yeah, it could be uh, pretty wicked. And you just got a short uh, stint of of, uh, some of the knowledge and sharings that uh, will be happening out there. Anyway, I think a a perfect uh, person to end on. Everybody loves Beth Martins. This is Beth and Breathless. Enjoy. Enjoy. 